Hello, Joe fans. I'm underwater again. I've done a lot of G.I. Joe videos lately. I mean, of course I've done G.I. Joe videos. It's a G.I. Joe channel. What I mean is, I've looked at a lot of G.I. Joe team members and vehicles. It's been a while since we've looked at Cobra, so let's not do that now. There was another terrifying foe of G.I. Joe. Destro was his name. Destro was his name. Cobra wasn't the only enemy of G.I. Joe, and it's been even longer since we've looked at Destro's Iron Grenadiers. Anybody smell something? Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. I'd like to start by thanking a patron. Thank you to Adam Verwell for your support. This is my primary source of income. I could not continue doing these videos without the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. A few weeks ago, I looked at a G.I. Joe underwater guy. The seas are a vital strategic territory. Great battles have been fought at sea. Every major player on the world stage must have a navy. When Cobra began its quest for world domination, it took a couple years before they added water vehicles and underwater specialists. Cobra's weapons and equipment were supplied by the international arms dealer Destro. Eventually, Destro decided he wanted to get into the world domination game himself and formed the Iron Grenadiers. Destro needed a naval force, and the backbone of that force is the subject of this week's review. Apparently, Destro also recruited fish. These guys came with fish. HCC 788 presents Undertow. This is Undertow, Destro's Frogman from 1990. This figure was first introduced in 1990 and was available only in 1990. It was discontinued for 1991. This was the only version of Undertow in the vintage era. There were a few post-vintage versions, but I don't have them. Undertow is an enemy of G.I. Joe, but he is not with Cobra. He is Destro's Frogman. That means he is a member of the Iron Grenadiers. Destro was first introduced in 1983 as Cobra's weapons supplier. He was also a de facto second-in-command of Cobra forces and an uneasy ally of Cobra Commander. He attempted to usurp the commander on more than one occasion. In 1988, the second version of Destro was released, and he was given his own faction, the Iron Grenadiers. The second version of Destro was packaged with a small vehicle, the Despoiler. The basic Iron Grenadiers troop Trooper was also released that year. Destro version 2 and the Iron Grenadiers Trooper set the basic color scheme for Iron Grenadiers of black, red, and gold. It was one of the coolest army builders in the entire line. It's a great figure. There was also a support team for the Iron Grenadiers back in 1988. There was Destro's General Voltar. He included a Condor for some reason. There were also a couple vehicle drivers. There was the Ferret, the driver of the Demon Tank tank and the nullifier, the pilot of the AGP. The packaging for Iron Grenadiers tried to set them up as enemies for G.I. Joe's Battle Force 2000. Battle Force 2000 was a sub-team within G.I. Joe with futuristic experimental vehicles. That rivalry never really happened though. Battle Force 2000 slowly faded out after 1988. In 1989 there was a carded figure, DJ, and one small vehicle, the Pulverizer, that was the end of Battle Force 2000. Dodger and DJ both got second versions later in the line, but they were no longer in Battle Force 2000. In fact, most of the team was killed off in the comic book series. The Iron Grenadiers carried on a bit longer. In 1989, there was the Annihilator and Targat for carded figures. There was also two vehicle drivers, Darklon, the driver of the Evader, and Wild Boar, the driver of 
of the Razorback. In 1990, there was Destro's anti-tank specialist Metalhead. There was Undertow, of course. There was also a vehicle without a driver, Destro's Dominator. That was pretty much the end of the Iron Grenadiers. Destro's forces were folded into Cobra. In 1992, there was a third version of Destro that did not have the Iron Grenadiers branding. In 1993, there was a second version of Targat, and in 1994, there was a second version of Metalhead, but they were no longer in the Iron Grenadiers. Undertow adds a much-needed underwater element to the Iron Grenadiers. Destro's squad had the land, air, and even space covered, but they were short on sea fighters. The name Undertow seems to imply this is an individual named character. The name doesn't sound right as a plural. This is an army builder, though. They are Destro's frog men. The file card also makes it clear this is a team, not an individual. An undertow is an ocean current that flows in the opposite direction from the surface waves moving toward a shore. So the surface waves move toward the shore, and the undertow moves away from the shore. Prototype names included submarauders and river rats. I'm not sure undertow is better than those. Let's look at the accessories for undertow. This guy had numerous accessories, and they are mostly appropriate for his specialty, but he cannot hold all of them at the same time, which means something is going to be loose on a shelf. Let's start by looking at his trident. The card contents call it a trident, and that is indeed what it is. It has three barbed prongs. It is in black plastic. It has a shaft. It's very thin. That trident will fit in the figure's hand very easily. It will not stress the figure's thumb because that shaft is very thin, but it is so thin it will also easily fall out. It has been stated elsewhere there is sort of storage for this trident. It can fit in the deep groove on the back of the figure and wedge into the back of his belt. But that does not work well for me, and I'm pretty sure that was not intentional. This is an odd choice of weapon, unless he is Poseidon. He doesn't hold it very well, he can't shoot it at the enemy, and it would be cumbersome to swim with. The next accessory the card contents call a riding skiff, and this one is impressive. It is in gray plastic, it has molded detail on the top and the bottom. It has a couple little water jets on the back to propel him through the water. It has two grips, one on each side. Those grips will fit in the figure's hands, but it's a little bit of a stretch, so be cautious with that. There is a peg on the top of the skiff, and that is for the black hose that connects to Undertow's mask. You can unplug the hose from the chest and then plug that end into the peg on the skiff, and now the figure is attached to the skiff while he is riding it. There is a weapon on the skiff, a red torpedo on the bottom. That torpedo is removable. There is a slot on the torpedo that fits on a peg on the bottom of the skiff. There isn't much detail on that torpedo, but it's remarkable to even get a removable torpedo on this accessory. This skiff will allow Undertow to move through the water faster than any human could swim, and the torpedo would allow him to take on G.I. Joe boats. This isn't so much an accessory as it is a small vehicle. The next accessory is this silver soft plastic fish, this barracuda. Yes, this does look like a real barracuda, and it is flexible. It can kind of move like a fish. Why does Undertow have it? Is it a trained fish? Does it have a freaking laser beam attached to its head? This was not unique among underwater figures. 1988 Hydro Viper included a Devil Ray. 1992 Eels version 2 included a Robot Shark. Also in 1992, Deep Six version 3 included a dolphin. We are not even close to being done looking at accessories. Next, let's look at the hose. That's what the card contents call it. This black soft plastic hose that connects to the action figure on a peg on the chest that can be removed. The other end fits on a peg on the mouthpiece of the scuba mask that can also be removed. This is a standard black hose that came with numerous other G.I. Joe action figures and functions 
in, in about the same way. This one is very short. Here's something you can do with that trident. You can plug the end of it into that black hose, and now he has a flail weapon. Now let's get to that scuba mask. The scuba mask has straps over the top in the center and around the back to attach to the figure's head. It can be removed. Have care when removing it to not break it. The mask is in gray plastic. It has a ridge pattern on the straps. It is in a soft, flexible plastic, but not quite as soft as I would like, so it is still possible to break this, especially at the mouthpiece where the hose attaches. The mask has some peculiar details. It has one red eye on the right side. The left eye is covered. I don't know why you would want to do this. Even if this is some kind of targeting or infrared system, I would think you would still want to see out of both eyes. There are crosshair details etched into the mask, and that detail is reflected on the card art. You can see it there, and I don't understand this. Why would you put the crosshairs on the outside of the mask? You can't see them from the inside. Finally, we get to the flippers. The flippers are in gray plastic. They are both the same. They have a ridge pattern on the top and nothing on the bottom. They attach to the feet. They can be removed. They have a well to fit the foot and a foot peg to attach to the foot. These flippers are not in soft plastic. They are in hard plastic. They are the same gray color as the gray on the action figure. These have been reissued a couple other times. These flippers were issued in silver plastic in 1992 for Eels version 2 and in yellow plastic in 1993 for Eels version 3. They were also issued in black plastic in 1994 for Shipwreck version too. At long last, we are done looking at accessories, so let's look at Undertow's articulation. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures well before 1990, so he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. His arms don't seem to go all the way down by his sides, especially the left arm, so that's a little odd, but he can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow, so he could bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Undertow, starting with his head. And on his head, he is wearing a green balaclava mask. This automatically makes him a ninja. There is an opening on the mask so you can see his eyes. There's very little detail detail on this mask. In fact, basically no detail on the mask. But that's okay because this will mostly be covered with the scuba mask. There is significant detail on the chest. He is wearing a red scuba suit top with green patches on the shoulder and a gray chest piece that goes around the back of his neck. On that ring around the neck, there are some black details. It almost looks like a shark bite. On that gray chest piece, there are black tanks with a peg for attaching the hose accessory. There is a green ridged panel under the tanks and that detail does kind of continue to the sides of the chest. This must be a rebreather. Undertow doesn't have a scuba tank. A rebreather is smaller than a traditional air tank but this is small even for that smaller underwater breathing option. His arms have the long red sleeves of that scuba suit with green bands on the outside upper arms and plain green gloves. These arms are not very well detailed. The waist piece is in gray plastic. It has an unpainted gray belt. It has a ridged green panel in the front that matches up with the green section on the torso. There is an unpainted gray device on the right side of the belt. There are these molded in rectangular details under the belt that match up to similar details on the torso. This makes me wonder if the lower half of this figure was at one time supposed to be red like the upper half. On the legs he has a gray scuba suit. On the left upper thigh he has a black band. It doesn't seem to attach to anything. He has gray panels on the upper and lower legs about the knees. Those are not traditional knee pads though. On the outside left lower leg he has a black knife and black bands that go around the left lower leg. Then he has gray feet. Those feet have no delineation of boots or anything like that. It's just a continuation of that gray 
scuba suit. Red and green is not usually a good combination unless it's on a Christmas tree. The gray really helps this figure. It provides a middle ground between the clashing red and green. Taken all together, I think the figure looks pretty good. Let's take a look at Undertow's file card. This file card has his faction as the enemy, and this was typical of Iron Grenadier file cards. He was not a Cobra agent, and he certainly wasn't a member of G.I. Joe. There is a portrait of Undertow, and the scuba mask has a different shape than the toy, and no central strap. This was perhaps an early design. This top paragraph says, any frogman can operate efficiently in clean water under optimum conditions, but the Undertow are especially trained to function and fight in the murky, polluted waters that clog busy industrial and military waterfronts. His wetsuit is made of a non-toxic, anti-corrosive material. His face mask is coated with silicone to repel oil slicks and is organically conditioned against hostile biological agents and infections. This guy should be going up against the eco-warriors. This bottom paragraph has a quote, presumably from someone in G.I. Joe. It says, Undertow will swim through anything. This guy makes leeches look friendly. It's almost impossible to defeat him in his own environment. If we take him on in his own backyard, we first have to get tetanus booster shots before we move out for action. The best defense against this slime swimmer is to keep a safe distance and throw grenades from behind a well-fortified enclosure. He, um, he swims in shit. In this case, why don't we just cede that territory to the enemy? No, no, let's not fight back. You guys can have the shit water. You win, you win. Which one of these guys is really the stinky diver? Looking at how Undertow were used in G.I. Joe media, they had sporadic appearances in the Deke era of the animated series. They were never very prominent. They first appeared in the episode Revenge of the Pharaohs. They attacked a dam piloting the Cobra Piranha. Destro appeared in that issue and he was working for Cobra, so it's unclear if the Undertow are agents of Cobra or just taking orders from Destro. They had the most screen time in the episode, an officer and a viperman. They participated in the training of new Cobra recruits. They seem to be working with Cobra here. This was when some G.I. Joe guys infiltrated Cobra as new recruits. They sometimes appeared in episodes with Destro, but they also seem to be Cobra agents, not specifically Iron Grenadiers. To my knowledge, Undertow did not appear in the comic book series published by Marvel Comics. I couldn't find a reference to an appearance in the various sources on the subject. I went through all the issues from the year 1990 and 1991, and I did not see him there. It's possible I missed it, because those issues included a lot of new characters and hundreds of vipers. He could have been in the background somewhere, and I missed it. Looking at Undertow overall, I like this figure. It's far Far from perfect, but it's a mostly well-appointed frogman for Destro's navy. He comes with numerous accessories, and they are mostly appropriate for his specialty. I don't know why he comes with a fish. A harpoon gun would have been a better weapon than the trident. Even if the trident can be stored on the figure's back, I still don't like it. He has a good offensive weapon in the skiff and the torpedo. With the torpedo, he could take out G.I. Joe watercraft. The mask is great, pretty much. It reminds me of the mask that came with Shipwreck version 2. We didn't get removable scuba masks on G.I. Joe Frogman very often. The figure itself is good. It looks exactly like a Frogman. I don't normally like red and green together, but the gray helps mitigate that color clash. Undertow does one fundamental thing I want from figures. He looks like he fits his specialty. The problem is, he doesn't look like an Iron Grenadier. Early Iron Grenadier's figures had a color scheme of black, red, red, and gold. Some figures departed from those colors, but the figures that stuck with those colors looked better. The colors worked well together and made the Iron Grenadiers distinctive and easy to identify. Imagine Undertow in those colors. It would have looked great. I don't love the name, Undertow. It sounds like an individual, not an army builder. In fact, I tend to refer to the figure in the singular, even though I know there would be a legion of them. Balancing the flaws and the good points makes this a middle-of-the-road figure Year, but I like it a bit more than it probably deserves based on its own merits. My favorite Cobra army builder is the Cobra Eels, and this kind of reminds me of that. I would like to see Cobra Eels and Undertow fighting side by side against G.I. Joe. The biggest disappointment is there were
were no other Iron Grenadier water fighters. Undertow could pilot Cobra watercraft, but they had none of their own. We just flushed out a new review of Undertow. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again to Adam Verwolf for your support. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube for more G.I. Joe toy reviews. I have a huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. Please check those out. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to to do it. You can even get your name in videos. You see all the names scrolling on the screen right now? Your name could be there. Next week we've got something big. Something kind of weird. But something surprisingly important to the history of G.I. Joe. I'll see you then. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. that smell? Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it.